Hey, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to make a dessert scene throughout Portugal. Bolo de Balacha Maria con Natas. This translates to Portuguese biscuit cake with cream. It's a take on a classic that's been around for many years throughout Portugal. You'll see it in all parts of Portugal, the Azores, Madeira Island, the mainland. The staples to the dish are these little Maria biscuits. If you haven't had them before, they're like a cookie, really mild sweetness. First time I was in Madeira Island, I was about five, six years old. And I just fondly remember my grandmother giving me these all the time. And for years, I thought Balacha was a Portuguese cookie. But after doing some research, I found that the first Maria Balachas were made in England in 1874 by a company called Franz. Typically, the Maria cookies will have the embossed name on it, and they're a pretty thin wafer, again, not too sweet. It wasn't until about 1959 where this cake recipe first appeared in a Portuguese cookbook. You can see from this illustration, which comes from that cookbook back in 1959, this is a very old recipe. It was quickly adopted by housewives of the time and throughout the years has been adopted by generations of families as a go-to dessert in Portugal. The original recipe does use just a buttercream. It's like sugar, raw egg yolks, and butter. So I, I might do that recipe sometime. Every time I've had Bulu de Balacha de Maria, I've had it a few times in Madeira, it's always been more with the nakish, where they cook it in a spring form pan. So I'm gonna do more of this modern take today. And so the first thing we wanna do is look through your recipe, make sure you have everything measured and ready to go. I have my sugar ready, my gelatin packets ready, cookies are ready. That first Portuguese recipe back in 1959, you know, there were kind of similar layered cakes with that cookie before, but what really stood the time of this being a Portuguese recipe is that they're always dipped in coffee. The first thing you should do is make sure your bowl and whisk are cool, especially if you have a warm house, because whipped cream holds up better and whips up easier if, if everything's cold. So you wanna make sure your heavy whipped cream or whipped cream, those are interchangeable. Heavy whipped cream has a little more butter fat. That, that's kept in your refrigerator until right before you're going to use it. So my cookie's ready, my coffee's ready. I'm going to use milk also in this recipe. Evaporated. Milk is just milk with 60% of the water taken out. It was just a way to make milk more shelf stable. So it's a little richer, obviously, than regular milk. The first thing I'm going to do is bloom the gelatin. That's something that always should be done with gelatin. If it doesn't bloom, it could clump up. You have to give it time to absorb some water. And you could use any liquid as water. So I'm gonna use this milk. I'm only putting about a quarter cup milk in there. And to that quarter cup, you just sprinkle the package of plain gelatin over it. And you wanna give that a little bit of a stir. I just used the back of a fork. You could let it bloom 10 minutes while it's blooming, we'll whip the whipped cream. So the reason we're using gelatin is because we're whipping cream, we're gonna add some milk to it, and you wanna stabilize that a little bit so it doesn't weep, so it holds up and doesn't fall apart. If you just whip the cream, after a while, it does start to lose its body, the structure breaks down, and sometimes it'll start to weep out like liquid. The way gelatin does that, gelatin is actually collagen proteins that when boiled, the proteins open up and become untangled, and then as it cools down, it starts to form little, it forms little spaces that trap water and hold the water in those little spaces so the water can't get out. So that's how gelatin makes jello. That's how it's gonna stabilize the water that's in the whipped cream. Okay, so now we're gonna whip our cream. The bowl is cold. The cream just came out of the refrigerator. You could just dump that all in at once. We're gonna whip it for probably 30 seconds to a minute. When it gets a little bit thicker, like it's starting to take on some volume, that's when we'll add the sugar. You can do this by hand. It just takes quite a bit longer. You can see it's definitely getting a little frothier and a little thicker. That's about the right time to start slowly adding the sugar in. So that was, so I whipped it. That was probably like 30 seconds at pretty high speed. If you're doing this by hand, it might take, you know, three minutes to get to this stage. And now we'll start adding the sugar. You can tell it's starting to get thicker. If, you're, if you watch the cream closely, Wherever the whip is going, it causes trails, almost like a pattern of the whip behind it. And 
So it's definitely getting much more frothy. We want to get it to a soft peak stage where if you put a dollop on a plate, the dollop will hold its shape. You can see it's sticking to the beater. If I put a dollop on a spoon, it holds its shape really well. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator while we move to the next step. Okay, the gelatin has been blooming for about 10 minutes. Now the rest of the condensed milk that was at room temperature, we'll put in a separate bowl with the addition of one tablespoon of sugar. In order for gelatin to have its effect, it has to be warm. Those proteins have to untangle and then it's when they start cooling down, they trap the water inside the little pockets. So I'll put this on a stove top. You just wanna bring it to a simmer. So simmering is about 190 degrees. Boiling's around 212. You, you don't want, you definitely don't wanna boil it for a long time. Anytime you're making jello, once it starts to bubble up, that's as far as you have to take it. You actually could damage the gelatin if you boil it for quite a while. Just about all the products I use from the little stove range top to these heat proof silicone spatulas can be found on my website, justcookwithmichael.com. I have a lot of the equipment on there. I do get a little percentage of that to help me keep the program going. So if you like any of these items, just click on one of the links you'll find. It's also in the description area of YouTube. There you go, you see your little, little bubbles are starting to form right there, right there, a little convection going on. And the temperature is one 91. So exactly when you see little bubbles forming, you are there. 197, 200, starts going up really fast from there. Turned off my electric burner. So I'll set this gelatin mixture aside for about two to three minutes while I get out the whipped cream and the stand mixer. Okay, it's been two minutes since I took the gelatin mixture off. So it's still really hot. Just again, you don't need a thermometer here, but it's still about 150 degrees, so still really warm. Now it's gonna go into the rest of my milk and I'll whisk that in here. So now all the condensed milk is in this bowl with the gelatin. And this bowl is a little warm. That's fine. This bowl is around 90 degrees now. All right, this is a little warm, but that's okay. You know, you don't want your, if your gelatin got cold, like refrigerator temperature, this would turn into a solid mass, a really firm piece of jello. You don't want that. So you want it to be warm, but not hot. And put our whipped cream back on the stand. This has been in the refrigerator. This is really cold, so this is probably like 40. And now we're just gonna slowly incorporate the two and right away start building the balashes, the muddy. Right now, at this point, you're just combining the mixture, you know, as long as it's all one homogeneous mass. Overall, the bowl still feels nice and cool. Okay, now sooner than later, you want to start layering up just like a lasagna. And you could break them up a little bit also because you want to fill in especially any big gaps. Mixture. All right, now we get our whipped cream gelatin mixture. Slowly press that in. And then it's just a pretty thin layer, maybe a millimeter to an eighth of an inch. Get more cookies ready. One. Two, three. Sometimes when I open up the package, some of the pieces are broken, so I save those to fill in. Tiramisu is made in a similar fashion, that Italian dessert, where you're taking lady fingers, dipping them in espresso, and then with, I believe it's mascarpone cheese, you layer them up in similar fashion. The 
should easily be able to go for another layer. For some reason, if you're running short, you know, it's depending on how much of this cream filling you're using in between the layers, you know, you might have to judge it and have this be your final layer and then just put cream over the top and then you decorate it with crushed balashish. Because your top layer of cream is probably the layer you want to use the most whipped cream on. Okay, now the rest of the cookies, and if you don't have any broken pieces, you probably want to reserve, I would say, for sure four cookies, maybe up to like eight cookies, to crush up and sprinkle on the top as garnish. Kind of work from the top and work the cream out to the borders. And get it in your refrigerator as quickly as possible. You can make these in just a regular like casserole dish or any pan, but it's gonna kind of be a different service. Here, you're gonna be able to cut it like a pie or a cake, where if you make it in like a lasagna type of pan or pie pan, you're just gonna have to like scoop it out. The other way you could do this sometimes is in a little ramekin, ramekin that's slightly bigger than the cookie. And it's like a self-serve bolo de balasha maria con nat dish. So right away in the refrigerator for about four hours until it sets up. This easily could be done a day or two in advance. If you're into Portuguese desserts, check out my playlist that has Pistage de Nata, also Queijadas de Leite, and Queijadas de Vila Franca, which is a dessert famous to the Azores. So a lot of different desserts to check out on there. Okay, now we're gonna crush up the little cookies, the balashish, to make a little garnish of crushed cookies on top of the cake. Again, I do recommend, the recipe uses two of these stacks of the balashish. I would recommend at least getting three in case you need them, and there's nothing wrong with having a few left over. You can get the whole pack of four on Amazon. Also, I know a lot of Portuguese markets carry them. And that's it. That was probably like four or five cookies. It's ready to go. All right, so the bulo was in the refrigerator for about four hours. Now, it's a good idea to get a knife, just go along the edge, make sure nothing's sticking directly to the pan. Put the cookie crumbs on top now while you have this pan, that way it'll stay a little neater, you won't have stuff falling off the sides. It kind of gives you a little bit of a border to work with. So now we'll just pop this open. Oh, look at that. Yum, yum, yum. There you go. Look at that nice profile on there, the little layers in between. Just a very beautiful cake. Now you could cook bolo de balasha maria con Go out and make one of the classics. Thanks for joining me. Now go cook for someone you love.